welcome to the Lean Out Your Business podcast, a show dedicated to helping entrepreneurs accelerate business growth and simplify success. I'm your host, Krista Grasso, and I've been working with businesses for more than two decades to help them lean out and optimize what's working while eliminating anything that's not adding value. So if you are ready to get more time back in your day, more profit in your business, and to do business differently, growing and scaling on your terms, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Lean Out Your Business podcast. This is the first part of a two-part series where I'm going to be sharing with you my top six trends and predictions for success in this new year. If you are looking to grow your business or scale your business in this new year, I really think these six things are going to be really important for you to be considering. And so we're going to go deep into each one, which is why I'm breaking this up into a two-part series. So today, Today, we're going to take a look at my top three trends and predictions, which have to do with social media, organic marketing versus paid advertising, and really deepening your connections with your buyers so that you can shorten that buying cycle. And stay tuned for part two, where we're going to look at the next three, which are how to differentiate and have that really bold point of view that sets you apart from the sea of so many other businesses that are out there, how to lean out and do less things, but better so that you're getting far better results for the time, money, and energy that you're investing in things and how to really focus on customer centricity and increased value for your clients. With that, let's go ahead and dive in to the first trend and prediction. So the first one that I want to dive into, this was one of the big themes and takeaways that I got when I attended Allie Brown's Iconic event back in November of 2021. And one of the things that I saw there was so many people talking about social media and in particular, a lot of people talking about the fact that they are no longer going to be using social media for their business. And what's really interesting is I've noticed a trend lately where a lot more people are taking social media detoxes. There's a lot of focus, of course, on mental health, which is really great. And for a lot of people, social media can be triggering. It can make them feel bad about themselves. It can cause them to compare their business to other people's. And for some, social media is a really great place to be. For others, it's just simply not where they want to be spending their time. And they are even at a point where they don't even want their team to be spending their time there. So I heard from some of the attendees at that event that they were going to be going off of social media 100% this year. And I have since seen a lot more businesses even outside that event make the same decision. So I think that what we're going to see this year when it comes to social media is one of two things. There's going to be some people who choose to go a different path, who really dive in and focus more on organic marketing efforts and collaborations and things of that nature and stop leveraging social media or stop leveraging the social media channels that they may have leveraged in the past, such as Facebook and Instagram, and maybe move towards different channels. But on the flip side of that is, you know, whenever you have some people who step away from something, that creates an opportunity for those who are still leveraging those platforms. So I think you're going to see some people step away. And then on the flip side, I think you're going to see other people really double down on the social media channels that they're leveraging. So the first trend that I see in prediction for 2022 is that kind of either going all in on social media or going all out entirely on social media and just simply not leveraging it. So I'm seeing a division when it comes to social media in this new year. And I think that that's going to be a trend that's going to continue over future years. I think right now, a lot of people have the desire to go off social media, but they aren't really sure what the alternative is or what else to be doing. As some of these other companies, especially some of the bigger companies out there that have said, hey, we're not leveraging social media, I bet people are going to be watching them really closely. And once they come up with an alternate means of reaching their clients, nurturing their clients, and doing lead gen, I bet a lot of them are going to be following suit and either changing the way that they leverage social media or simply not leveraging social media at all. So I will definitely be paying attention just simply because I find it so curious and so fascinating 
when people make these really big changes for lean out method personally will be doubling down on social media. That's the, the side of things that we're going to be on. But I know many of the clients that I'm coaching are really interested in not using social media at all or going down to only one primary channel. One of the things that I highly recommend if you are going to be continuing to leverage social media in the new year is to double down on one channel before you spread yourself too thin across multiple channels. It's okay to have a presence in multiple places, but you really want to pick your one core channel that's the place that your target market hangs out the most. And you want to go all in on that and really learn the different features, the different functionality, and really make sure that you're getting the best return on the time investment that you're putting into that channel, and then leverage content repurposing for some of those other channels. What I see too many people doing is they feel like they need to be everywhere, and so they're spreading themselves really thin across a lot of different platforms, and they're really barely scratching the surface on each of the platforms and ultimately not getting the results or the conversions out of it. So let's dive into a couple of the social media platforms in particular that I think are going to be a big focus area for 2022. And the first is LinkedIn. With so much going on and so many changes to Facebook and Instagram and so many people getting kind of frustrated with those platforms, I think we're going to see more use of LinkedIn. So if you serve other businesses or if your target market is active on LinkedIn, I think there's a real opportunity there because I think it's fairly under leveraged. There are a lot of people who use it, but again, if LinkedIn became that like one channel that you double down on, you really want to look at what are all those different features and different functionalities that LinkedIn has available and are you fully leveraging it? We know how important video is. So are you leveraging video on LinkedIn? I know a lot of people who aren't, who may be leveraging video on something like an Instagram or a Facebook, but they aren't yet doing it on LinkedIn. Are you doing LinkedIn lives? Are you exploring the new creator mode? So there's a lot that you could be doing, but I think that LinkedIn is really going to be the place to be this year for anybody who serves other businesses or who has that customer who leverages LinkedIn. You can do both organic and paid on LinkedIn, and it can become a great alternative to some of the other platforms, or in addition, if you have the team to support it, so you're not stretching yourself too thin. The other channel that I want to talk about is YouTube, and arguably YouTube is much more of a search engine than it is a social media channel, but we'll talk about it here anyway, and I think the reason why YouTube is going to be such an important platform in 2022 is because of the increased focus on video. And when you think about repurposing, if you're already creating video content for some of your other platforms, there's a real opportunity to be using and leveraging YouTube to reach more people or to have YouTube be your primary one channel. So if you're not already leveraging YouTube, this is a really good time to start again if you have the team and resources to support it so that you're not spreading yourself too thin or if this becomes that one channel that you want to go all in on. And as I mentioned, YouTube is much more of a search engine. So to make the most of that content and make sure that you're actually using it as lead gen to reach new people, as well as to share that content with your current list and your current followers, is to make sure that you're writing descriptions and titles with organic search in mind, right? So keywords are going to be really important, whereas in the past where tags were something that were sometimes important, they really aren't going to get you very far this year. They're not something that's going to help you be found in search. So they're not really worth your effort, whereas those keywords are really important. And I think keywords are always important, whether you're doing blog content or you're posting on Pinterest or you're posting on YouTube, any of those places that are more or search engine oriented, those are where keywords become really important. So if you're going to be creating video anyway, you may want to consider YouTube or create a specific strategy for YouTube and make sure that you're leveraging those keywords to really get the best reach. And just my one little tip that I'll share with you is don't worry about your videos being super polished and professionally edited. I know a lot of my clients will hold themselves back with releasing the video because they're like, well, I need to get a better setup or I need to get better lighting or I really want to hire somebody to come in and produce videos. And I have some clients who do really professionally produced and edited videos. But the reality is that that's not what a lot of markets are looking for. And you just need to know, you know, for your business, is that super polished 
professional, highly edited video, what your target market needs. And in most instances, it's not it's not at all. And so you just have to figure out what your market needs, but you could leverage a tool like StreamYard or even with Zoom. But what I like about StreamYard is that you can put your branding in and you can make your videos look pretty darn good just sitting at your computer and leveraging something like a StreamYard. And so you don't have to go all out or hold yourself back from a tech or an editing perspective, you can do things much simpler and still get the same reach, the same engagement, and you'll feel much more real to your target market. So don't let that hold you back if that's one of the things where you're doing one of those I will wins. So just something to consider there. And then my final tip as we round out the social media one is make sure that as you are leveraging social media, you aren't thinking of it just in terms of social media. I see a lot of people thinking, oh, I need to post on Instagram three times a week. I need to do this. And it becomes a very checkbox oriented thing that they need to do these things. Whereas really social media is part of your content marketing. And you should be thinking about it in the terms of content marketing. What is it that you're trying to achieve? What is it that you're trying to promote? What conversions are you looking to be getting? Yes, there's some success patterns. You do have to show up consistently, which doesn't mean every single day, but you do need to have some consistency around things. Consistency is really important in providing value-added content and not simply promotional content is very important. But you do want to be thinking of things very strategically and thinking of them in the context of content marketing. So if you don't already have a marketing schedule or a content calendar, this is definitely the year to make sure that you are incorporating those. So the second trend that I'm seeing is an extension of some of what we've been talking about related to social. And that is that I'm seeing a trend of more increased organic marketing over such an emphasis on paid advertising. So in the past, a lot of businesses generated pretty much all of their leads through paid ad strategy. It was how they grew their business. And some of them also had an organic marketing strategy along with it, but others really very minimally invested in organic marketing and really went all in on a Facebook ad strategy or some kind of paid ad strategy. But with the iOS changes, which are going to be expanding beyond iOS and the increased privacy restrictions, I think we all know, especially if you run paid ads, they are getting increasingly expensive and they can also be a bit unpredictable. While some have figured out how to get really great results in the middle of the changes, nobody got there by continuing to do the same things in the same way, right? Your ad strategy from this time last year is not going to be effective at this time this year. And so you really have to have that commitment to rethinking your strategy, experimenting with different things and finding what works if you haven't already figured that out. And I think that's just the nature of all things in business anyway, but especially when it comes to ads. If you've been doing ads for a while, like we have, I'm sure you know that just as soon as you kind of nail something and it seems like it's working, there's some kind of change and you've got to rethink it all over again. And so that's just kind of the way that it goes. But these most recent changes have had a lot a lot of people say, you know what, this just isn't worth it. I don't want to continue to try to do Facebook ads and Instagram ads. And I've seen some people rethink, experiment, and really figure it out. Um, or they're still in that process of figuring it out and they've doubled down on that. I've seen others say, you know what, I'm out. Similar to social media and some people opting out of leveraging social media, I've seen some people opting out of paid Facebook and Instagram ads. And some are, are really not putting much of an emphasis on paid ads at all in the short term. Long term, they'll probably go back to that strategy. Whereas others are switching and experimenting with different platforms. They're looking at paid ads on Google and on LinkedIn and on YouTube and on Pinterest and on some of those other platforms to see what kind of reach that they can get. So as always, right, when some people step away from doing something, it creates an opportunity for those who are still there to really double down and figure it out. So if you're going to continue to do paid Facebook and Instagram ads, you know, the one tip that I would give you there is know that you're going to have to be experimenting. Don't try to keep doing the same things and expect the same results. 
really try to go all in, figure out what's working. As we know, video is really doing a whole lot better. Direct conversions to things don't seem to be doing as well. I can tell you what's working well for us right now is doing just simply video view ads. We have ads that run to this podcast for people to listen and build up that no like, and trust. And then when we do have some sort of event, like my scalable signature offer workshop series that I do every 90 days, at that point in time, when we run ads, we run them to that warm audience. And that seems to be working a little bit better and helping us manage our ad costs. But the ad costs are up pretty significantly. They're not quite double, but almost um, as the same ad costs that we had at this time last year. So we will be sticking with paid advertising. We will be continuing to leverage that. But again, I know a lot of businesses have either decided to pivot how they do paid ads or for the short term to really not focus on paid ads at all, which means they're going to be doubling down on organic marketing strategies. And whether you have paid ads or not, you definitely want to be leveraging organic marketing strategies in 2022. This includes leveraging your social media, blogging, the web content that you have, and leveraging those keywords for SEO, podcasting, media and PR features, email marketing, et cetera, right? There's a lot of different things that you can do for organic marketing, but you want to be thinking about what you want to be investing your time, money, and energy into in this new year. And also many people will be focused on, and I think it's really smart to be focused on, collaborations, partnerships, and referrals. So that is usually one of the best ways to bring in new clients, to generate new leads. When somebody comes in through a collaboration or through a referral, they're already a lot warmer because they came to you through some sort of trusted source. So not only with the right collaborations, can you get in front of audiences that already are your ideal target market, but when you come in collaborating with somebody that they trust, they immediately come in warmer and you're going to have much higher conversion rates. So that's why I think, you know, paid ad strategy, especially paid ad strategy to cold traffic, very effective for building your list, effective for continuing to grow your business, but you typically have fairly low conversion rates. It takes a lot of touches to get somebody to ultimately make that buying decision. Whereas when you come in through a collaboration or a power partnership of sorts, at that point in time, people are already warmed up much more likely to convert. And so you'll have those higher conversion rates. Now, when it comes to referrals, if you do not already have a solid referral strategy in place for your existing clients, I would definitely make that a focus for this year. So your existing clients are your best source of new clients. A, they already know who you're looking for, who the program or the offer is a good fit for. They know you in your style. They know the person they're referring. So typically when someone comes in through a referral, they are a much better fit client. And again, because it's referral based, you typically have much higher conversions. Basically that other person already sold you at, by the time, you know, they get on the phone with you or they review your sales page or they go through whatever you're doing for conversion, whether that be a free workshop or something like that. That, they're already warmed up to you. They're basically at that point just confirming that yes, they want in, but they probably signed up already planning to join and work with you. And so I highly recommend, again, having that solid referral strategy in place and really looking at collaborations and partnerships. And for the partnerships, that's really power partners where you're looking at other people that you know, like, and trust and can refer your existing clients or people in your community to if they are looking for somebody that's outside the scope of what you do and that other person does the same for you. So you can generate a lot of really great great business through those power partnerships, which is a little different than a collaboration, where with the collaboration, you're typically doing something jointly with somebody. I would consider, you know, like a podcast swap, for example, could be a collaboration going live in each other's Facebook groups or together on a LinkedIn live could be a good example of a collaboration or even doing a summit or some kind of event together is an example of a collaboration. So really look at your organic marketing strategies in addition to or as an alternative to some of what you've done in the past for paid ads.
So the number three trend and prediction that I'm seeing, and this was one that I shared last year for 2021 as well, is the importance of really deepening the connection with your prospects, your leads, your clients. And ultimately, when you do this, this will help you to shorten the buying cycle, which is really important. You want to shorten the buying cycle and you want to also be able to retain your existing clients. And a lot of that is going to come through building that deeper connection with them. So I think one of the reasons why video is so popular and so in demand is because people do want that connection, right? Today's buyer, they're much more savvy. They don't just want lists of how-to information or just simply inspiration. Those things have their place, but at the end of the day, they really want to know the people that they're considering working with and buying from, right? They don't want the like nameless, faceless brands anymore. They want to know the people. They want to know you. They want to know your clients. They want to know their experiences and their successes. And so anything that you can do to build a connection, not just with yourself, but also with your business, your brand as a whole is going to go a really long way. So when you think about prospects, what you really want to be thinking about is how can you better connect with them? How can you shorten that buying cycle? And then once they become a paying client, how can you deepen that connection so that they both retain and remain a paying client so you have that long-term customer lifetime value and also so they become a brand advocate and end up referring other people to you, which is part of that organic marketing strategy. One of the things that I talk about and walk people through in my Build to Scale Offer Incubator program is the importance of transformation over transaction and the fact that, you know, people really want support. They want accountability. In a lot of cases, they want a higher touch experience. And some people really value a smaller circle and higher touch experience. So if today your business model is primarily DIY courses and things that are very hands-off, this is definitely the time to be thinking about, can you add a one-to-many group offer? Can you do something where you have a smaller circle or higher touch experience for people? There's a lot of different ways that you can do that. You can even add a VIP tier. For example, in my Planner Academy program, where I teach people how to take their signature method and their signature offer and create a physical printed planner workbook or journal for it. For that, I have two tiers. I have the DIY version for the person who literally is just looking for the how-to. They want to create a plan or they want to roll up their sleeves and get it done. They're not looking for community connection support. They just want to know what to do. For that, I do have a DIY version, but I also have a VIP tier on top of it that I call Elite. And that is for people who want to join me. We do a one-day virtual retreat together and we do six months of Q&A calls. And so if you have that DIY program today, can you add some sort of VIP experience or component on top of that, at least optionally for people who want more of that connection and more of that support? So that will help those people who are making a buying decision and really looking for connection and whatever it is that they're investing in. But the other thing is once somebody does sign on to work with you is are there personal touches and things that you can do? Right. So when new clients sign on to work with me privately for private coaching or when they join one of my high touch group programs like my Simplify to Scale, I send them a personalized handwritten note that I actually write along with a 90 day lean out planner and usually a nice little welcome pack. Right. And so if you go to my Instagram uh, reels, you can see a little behind the scenes of what it looks like. And that really goes a long way. That's one of the reasons why I love teaching people how to create planners and and workbooks and journals, because there's something about that physical product, that tangible product, or that package that somebody gets in the mail that really helps them have a deeper connection with the brand and with you, especially if you take the time to do something like write a handwritten note. Now, obviously I don't do this for every single person who invests in something in my business, but I do for my private coaching and my high ticket clients, because I think it just helps establish that connection right from the beginning. Now let's look at leads and prospects, right? So when you look at your marketing calendar for the year, when you're planning out your launches, you want to have connection in mind. And maybe in the past, you did everything 100% automated. You've got things pre-recorded, you've got emails pre-written, and everything is 100% hands-off no connection, no interaction. It's just an automated funnel that you're taking people through. 
that is great for you from a time perspective and a scalability perspective, but that may or may not be great for your prospects. And you may not get the conversion rates that you could if you add a live component to it. And so maybe you could even just simply do a live open house or a live ask you anything about the program. I'll do this sometimes when I have people coming through some of my replays or some of my more automated funnels. I will do a periodic open house so they get the opportunity to come in and actually interact with me instead of them just simply watching a webinar that I've done or reading emails that I've written. So think about what you do and think about how can you form a connection? Is there something that you can add live that you think would help with conversions and really give your prospects what they're looking for? And if not, if you want to keep it fully automated, that's fine too, but think about how you can build more of a connection through that automation sequence that you have in place. And my final connection tip there is, especially as you're going through launches for any of you who do launch events, for those really warm prospects, the ones who you think would be just the absolute perfect fit for your program and that you think have a genuine interest in it, you can take that extra step and go ahead and send them a personalized video or leave them a personal voice memo. And while you can't do that for everybody from a time constraint perspective, you absolutely can pick your top 10, your top five. You can pick a certain number of people to do that with. And that just goes such a long way in forming that connection, building that no like and trust, and just showing your commitment to their success. And it really does help with conversions. So I think anything that you can do to increase connection is going to help you really to differentiate and you're really going to meet your customers where they're at and with what they're looking for in this year. I hope you got a lot of value out of these first three trends. We'll be diving into the last three trends in our next episode. So I will see you again next week. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Lean Out Your Business podcast. I hope you got a lot of value and actionable insights from today's show and would love if you take a moment to leave us a review. If you have any questions on today's episode or on how to lean out your business, join us over in our private Facebook community where every week we do live training and Q&A and I'd love to have you be part of the conversation. Head to leanoutmethod.com slash group to join us. And before you go, be sure to subscribe to the show so you're the first to know when we release a new episode. We'll see you next week.